And I'll never forget this moment. I've never talked about this on a podcast ever. And I woke up one day and I was like, what the hell did I just do and who am I? So let's unpack that. There is something seriously wrong here wow. because the way that I'm showing up is totally disconnected from who I really am. I know I felt like that in my life so many different times. I'm probably pushing away opportunities that are more alignment with me yeah. because of the way that I'm being seen. Is there a process or something that you did that you started to unpack how you were being seen to shift into who you really wanted to become? All right, guys, I am so excited for you to be able to meet my friend, Jen Gottlieb. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I am honored and I'm so excited for this conversation. Finally, we I get know. to do this. We almost did it virtually and I'm so glad we waited because now we get to talk about your beautiful book. But before we do that, I want to unpack because you have such a cool story. Like people always have these stories of they maybe came from nothing and then they built something. But you have a unique story that I don't think anybody else has had on the show which is you were a VH1 babe, right? Like you were on 13 years, all of these shows. Tell us a little bit about who you were before the businesses, before the books, before all the PR, so that our audience has a little bit of behind the scenes of Jen. I love that you just call it a VH1 babe. You were absolutely, no you're still a babe. A babe but yes. I love that, that is exactly what it was. I was a VH1 babe. So I, I was an actress, that's why I, I went to, that's what I went to college for. I dropped out of college and I was like, I'm gonna move to New York City and just pursue my dream. I wanted to be on Broadway. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to sing and dance. And of course that comes with just taking any job that you can possibly yeah. get. My story really started out of school when I got the the dream role, like my dream role, the role I always wanted to play, which is not your typical dream role of Linda in The Wedding Singer, you know, the Adam Sandler movie, oh, The yeah, Wedding the Singer. Adam Sa yes, yeah, yes. so Linda's like the bitch okay. that leaves Robbie Hart at the altar. Yes. And she's like a rocker chick and she's hilarious. And it was my dream role. And I booked that part oh after a lot of rejection and persistence and getting the understudy. And I tell the entire story of the book. It was the craziest story, how I actually got it, but I got it. And I played this part across the country for a year. And when I got home, there was this audition for this heavy metal talk show on VH1, all about heavy metal music. And I don't like heavy metal music, Candy. Like, I don't know anything about you heavy You looked music. the part, though. In all of those videos, you looked like you liked it. Oh, I did. <laughs> I was really, really good at pretending to be what I needed to be. I was an actress. Yeah. That was my job. And I was yeah. like, okay, I, I can do this. I just played Linda. I was rocker chick, like babe yeah. for a year. I can play this part too. So I went into this audition and I studied everything there was to know about heavy metal music. And I wore a costume and I booked this part. And I was like, yes, I'm an actress. Like this is what I'm supposed to do. Pretend to be other people. Yeah. But what was crazy about this specific job was that it was a talk show. So I wasn't playing a real character. I was myself. I was Jen, but I was this version of Jen that I needed to be to have mm. this job. And so I found myself completely hiding who I really was and creating this character version of me that liked heavy metal music, that was like super hardcore and like angry and sexy and like, yeah, let's go kind of a thing. Yeah. And I built this brand by accident. It was completely by accident. Everyone thought that I was this heavy metal girl and I was totally, totally out of alignment from who I really was. Mm. And I had no idea that this was going to turn into, it was five years wow. uh, on TV with this persona. And I woke up one day and I was like, what the hell did I just do and who am I? Because I was spending so much time trying to be someone that everyone else wanted me to be to get love, fans, money, opportunities. Yeah. And when it all was taken away from me, because like this happens, shows get canceled, right? Things shift, things change. And uh, in one, one week's time, the show got canceled. The guy that I was dating left me for one of our friends. And I was in a state in my life where I was completely out of alignment and severely depressed because mm. I knew that there was something more for me to th than this show, but I didn't know what was next. And then when it was all taken away, I was like, what do I do now? Mm. And I found myself in this tiny little apartment with a window that faced a wall in New York City with like six other actors living in this oh, apartment gosh. and not knowing who I was, not having a boyfriend anymore, the guy that I thought I was going to marry, no longer in my life. And I had spent all my money. I was really irresponsible because I just had no direction mm -hmm. and I had to start over. Mm. And I wish I could tell you, Candy, that in that moment, I was like, yes, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a business. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. I didn't. It took a lot 
of starting before I was ready. It took a lot of personal development. It took a lot of books and podcasts, and it took a lot of connections and people and events. But I did build what I have now, and I and I was able to actually start being seen as the real me and real Jen. And it wasn't easy. It was an entire process, and it went from so many pivots and shifts. And I, I say this because I know that the listener might be somebody that's had a lot of different iterations of their yeah. career mm -hmm. and have done a lot of different things. And they might not understand how all the dots will connect or how it'll all make sense, but it's all part of the story. I was a personal trainer. I was in the wellness industry. I was an online coach. I owned a PR agency that we sold. Yeah. I hosted events and then I taught entrepreneurs how to build brands. And that's what we're doing now. Now I'm an author of a book and it's all part of it. When I look backwards now, I'm like, thank God that happened. Yeah. Because that's such a part of the story. It's part of how I got to where I am. And that's all part of how I'm being seen and how I'm building my brand today. And isn't it interesting that if that wouldn't have happened, you wouldn't have probably been on the path that you're on now. And I think so often, especially in business or building wealth or anytime you want to do something big, something happens. Maybe something's taken from you and you feel like something just got pulled. The rug got pulled out. Now all of a sudden your boyfriend's gone, your job's gone. And now what? But if it wasn't for that moment, for that redirection, you wouldn't be on the path that you are now. And I think that one thing you said really makes me want to unpack for anyone listening. You mentioned that you almost didn't recognize yourself, like this persona that you created. Did you ever have moments within your journey of those five years that you felt incongruent with who you are and who you were showing up as? So many moments. And I pushed them away. And we we all have an inner voice mm -hmm. if we listen. We all know. We all have. We all have... That, that voice that whispers, and sometimes you don't listen to the whisper, and then if you don't, Oprah always says, if you don't listen to the whisper, it'll, it'll start screaming at you, and it'll yeah. get louder and louder and louder. I had so many damn whispers, and it took a while for it to start screaming and for me to actually pay attention. But every single time I put on that costume and I went out onto that set, and I was playing this person that I wasn't, and, I, and there was a live studio audience, and I was looking at them, and they were amazing people. They were so into the music. They're great. Heavy metal fans are the best. And they thought that I was this person person and I wasn't and I felt like a liar. And I'll never forget this moment. I've never talked about this on a podcast ever, but this was a moment where I really understood that I was not showing up as me. I got invited to this dinner at this this very prominent woman's apartment in New York City. It was a very special dinner for women that were doing big things. And it was really special that I got invited. And this was the time when I was on VH1 and I think I was invited because I was on television. Yeah. And so I, I, I walk in and the host, which is this woman who she's a, was a major editor at one of the biggest magazines at the time. She's like, I almost didn't invite you um, because I was kind of scared of you. Mm. She goes, I, I looked at your website and you could look kind of angry and scary and like metal -y. But now that I met you, you're totally normal and great and amazing. But I almost didn't invite you here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there is something seriously wrong here. Wow. Because the way that I'm showing up is totally disconnected from who I really am. And I'm I'm probably pushing away opportunities that are more alignment with me yeah. because of the way that I'm being seen. Yeah. So let's unpack that. So you felt incongruent. If there's anyone listening, I know I felt like that in my life so many different times where I'm like, wait a minute, there's that little nudge and you try to rationalize it. You try to rationalize the red flag or ignore and think of the potential or all the, the benefit that you're getting out of something. If anyone's listening is there and they're struggling with something that really hit them, is there a process or something that you did that you started to unpack how you were being seen to shift into who you really wanted to become? Well, I was forced to figure this out mm -hmm. because- Which every, tends to help. <laughs> yes. I, my back is against the wall. I always, like, sometimes shit happens so the shift can happen. Yeah. And I needed the shit to happen. I needed the breakdown in order for the breakthrough to happen. And that happens sometimes. Like, sometimes you just can't get yourself back in. And mm -hmm. I believe, like, whatever you believe is amazing for you, I believe that, like, God stepped in and was like, you can't get yourself back into alignment. So I'm going to take all this from mm -hmm. you and slap, slap you back into alignment right now. Yeah. And it's- Really, the the first step to this whole thing was like a tiny little itty bitty commitment that I made to myself. And it always, I feel like for me, it always starts with not fully believing, not going in all in 100%, but almost like one little action step that can kickstart momentum. And when I was staring out at that brick wall in that tiny little apartment, and I was the most depressed I'd ever been, my mom actually came into the city to take care of me because she was so worried about me because I had spiraled so deeply and I couldn't mm -hmm. even get out of bed. And she gave me this book. And my mom is really into personal development. 
and I was not. Oh, that's at the time. nice. Yeah, yeah, she was like a Reiki master, and like, and I was like, Mom, whatever with your books. Like, I, I don't want your stupid book. She gives me this book, and it's actually a book full of affirmations by a woman named Louise Hay. Oh my gosh, it's what called, a book to give you! I know it's called "You Can Heal Your Life" yeah. by Louise Hay, and I'm like, I'm not going to read this book, and she knew it. So my mom photocopied one of the affirmations that she wanted me to read, and she put it inside the book. And on the back of the photocopy, it said, "Jenny, I hope you find yourself again." Hmm. And so I looked at this. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to read this book, but I will read this affirmation every day. And this is, I will just read this this affirmation. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know what it's going to do, but I commit to reading this every day. And I put it on my refrigerator and I stared at that affirmation and I read it every morning, no matter what. And I truly believe that, I don't know if it was the actual affirmation or the, you know, starting to believe in myself by reading these words. I really think it was the commitment that I made to myself to read that each day and consistently sticking with one thing that I knew that I could do and I could follow through with that gave me more confidence to start stretching a little bit more and getting outside of that apartment and going to Barnes and Noble and starting to read books and starting to figure out what business I wanted to build and started to walk into gyms and figure out that I wanted to be a personal trainer and start to build that business and start to grow that and then start to shift and move. And like, it was all kickstarted by that one tiny commitment. Because I truly believe that confidence comes from sticking with the commitments you make with mm-hmm. yourself, yeah. right? And every time I did it, I was like, okay, I could do this. What else can I do today? Yeah, it's stacking the small wins, right? It's you exactly need to have right. those few small wins. How, many, how much time when ha- happened, how much time passed from the time that you started reading that affirmation, she gave you that book, until you started having some bigger wins? Yeah, the big wins started to happen very, very soon after that. Because I just started to say yes to things because I started to expand and I started to actually dive in. I'm a student of personal development. I am a student of of podcasts like this and books. And I would really start to like, I was like, okay, that affirmation made me feel better. It made me get out. So I started listening in my ear to podcasts as I would walk from audition to audition. And I would start to just think a little bit differently and shift and like just take action on things that I was afraid to do. I started going to events and I started building my first business very, very soon after that. That was, it became was a that personal training. It business? was, okay. it was, and it went from being a personal training business to being an online coaching business to having trainers all over New York city, training people for me and really scaling and growing. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was doing it. We never by, do. No, <laughs> taking action without knowing what the hell I was doing. But here's the crazy thing about all of this. And I love connecting the dots and remembering why like the shift sometimes happens out of the shit, but you know why eventually in the Mm -hmm. future. This book, I I was pitching publishers for this book and I know you had a much easier process. You didn't have to pitch anybody. I had to pitch publishers for this book and I wanted it to be traditionally published. Mm -hmm. And we were getting a lot of no's and we were getting a lot that just didn't seem like a fit. And the last publisher on the list of people we were going to talk to was Hay House. Louise Hayes Louise Publishing Hay. Company. Yeah, and I get on a call with these with this team. Louise Hayes is no longer with us. Right. She, she yeah. passed away, but she built this. And Reed Tracy now owns. Right? Reed yeah. Tracy. Yep. Right. And this is probably one of the biggest publishing houses for personal development. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I tell all, all of a sudden it's like the story of Louise Hay and the affirmation, and that was the the wow. first win. That was the first piece of. Motor. I'm like, she changed my life. That's why I wrote this book. Basically, tied it all together. And then they were the ones that gave me my book deal, and that's why be seen is in the world right now. Amazing. And it's so interesting because you were being seen then. And I think people listening could maybe want to learn more about you and what you do and read the book. But they're like, you know what? I don't really like being seen. We were just talking about this off air before we started. I'm more of an introvert. I don't know what it's like to be seen. I'm not like that. I don't want to be an actress. I don't want to be in front of the cameras all the time. Is there anything you can help those people break through as far as what are the first steps you need to take and why you need to do it, especially if you want to be an entrepreneur or business owner? Yeah. Specifically for business owners, entrepreneurs, or anybody with a service, a story, or a product that can help people. First of all, I hear you. I see you if you're an introvert and you don't like being on camera. I get it. Okay. And you don't absolutely have to be on camera. That is not a non-negotiable. You need to be self-aware enough to understand what's going to be the first barrier of entry for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's written word. Maybe that's audio. That's okay. Just like the affirmation that I did, I just started doing something and that opened up the floodgates. It helped me believe a little bit more to get another win and another win and expand. And maybe you'll start with written word and then you'll go eventually to audio. And then maybe you're like, oh, I could do this. Then you go to video. Mm -hmm. So you can take it one baby step at a time. Don't have to believe 100% or go for it 100%. You just need to be in like the 51% mode to start planting the seeds, to start taking action because confidence is built over time. But it's unbelievably important that you are visible and here's why. Every day that goes by that you're not making yourself visible to the people that you can help is another day that those people are going to go buy from someone else or partner with someone else or listen to someone else or follow someone else that isn't as good as you and doesn't care as much as you. 
simply because you're too insecure or worried about what you look like or what you sound like or people judging you yeah. so you're not putting yourself out there. I'm thinking about everyone that's listening to this right now. Imagine if you didn't have the courage to be seen and create your book or this podcast. People that have been so helped by you, that have gotten amazing strategy and built wealth and, and have built the lives of their dreams because they listened to tactics and tools that you gave them. Imagine if they didn't have that because you were too scared to be seen. Yeah. So it's not about you, the person that's listening. I'm talking to you right now. It's about H-O-P-E is my favorite acronym. Help one person every day. So every time that I get afraid to put myself out there, which I do, and I'm actually marketing a book right now, which is the most vulnerable thing in the entire world. It really is. It's a whole nother level for me. And I've been seen on every level that there is. This is a new level. So I'm using this acronym every day. And when I wrote the book, I was using this acronym because I'm thinking about the one person. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. The reason that we get so insecure or so afraid is because we're worried about what we look like or what we sound like yeah. or if we're good enough or if everyone's going to like what we have to say. When really, if we're talking to somebody and giving them information that they need, it's not about you. It's about that other person, that one person that maybe needed to hear what you had to say that day. Yeah. So when I wrote my book, you'll read it and you'll read it, you'll understand what I'm saying because I'm talking to one person while I'm writing this book. I envisioned my girl on the other side of the computer. I never got writer's block because I was just talking to her. Mm -hmm. I, her name is Kayla. She's a Pilates instructor. She's too scared to put on, herself on camera or be seen, but she really wants to build a brand. Mm -hmm. And I would sit there and I'd be like, all right, Kayla, what's up? Where I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to do right now. And I just talked to her. And that is what helped make it flow and what removed my ego from it and what removed the fear of being seen or the fear of being rejected or the fear of not being good enough. Because it wasn't about me, it was about her. What do you think makes this book, because you said it's more vulnerable. We were yeah. chatting backstage, you were saying it's more vulnerable. It puts you out there in a different way. What do you think is different about a book than just showing up on camera for shows or acting or Broadway? Mm. Well. There's so many things. And first thing is that there's stories in that book that I've never told before. There's very vulnerable stories, stories that no one knows. But I felt like when I decided to write this book, I knew if I'm going to write a book, I'm going to do it. And mm -hmm. I'm going to go all in and I'm going to give them what they need. I'm going to give them uh, what they want, what they need, all the juiciness, all the things that are going to help them make a shift. I want them to close that book and have every single thing from me that I could possibly give them in order to start their journey of being visible and being seen for who they really are. So there's stories in there that are vulnerable. There's also, I mean, when you're writing a book, you know, you went through this. There's imposter syndrome does not discriminate. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't matter how successful you've become. It doesn't matter how many times you've been, you've been on TV or you've done really big things. Imposter syndrome or perfectionism or analysis paralysis or comparison, all of those symptoms of fear, which I talk about in the book, always rear their ugly head, no matter what level you're at. Yeah. And when you're hoping that somebody picks up your book from a store and reads it and enjoys it, there's a lot of fear there. Yeah. Are enough people going to like it? Are enough people going to buy it? Are they going to understand it? Are people going to understand me? Uh, am I good enough to write this book? All of those fears. And yeah. I'm saying this out loud for you, listener, and for you, Candy, to understand and know that it doesn't matter what level you get to in your life. Fear is always going to be there. And it's not about getting rid of the fear. I've learned this over, mm -hmm. over a lot of time of being very, very afraid of a lot of things. The fear doesn't go away. Nope. You just get a lot better at doing the things with yep. the fear there anyway. Yeah. And what I think people listening to will understand, the more you do, the more you accomplish, it's like that's when the confidence hits because you have the experience that you felt this feeling before and you have discernment to know that you didn't fall apart and it wasn't as bad as it was in your mind and not everybody hated it. So that when you go to do the next thing, you have the proof, the data, just like in a business, to go back and look that if you put forth this effort, you're probably going to get this result, and it's probably not going to be as bad as the depths of your mind make up to be. A hundred percent. And I know so many people want to do big things with their life, but they get tripped up by a lot of those fears, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of what other people will say. And I know how vulnerable a book is, so I love that you did it anyways, even with the fear, and are still doing it, because I think it, even if somebody doesn't want to write a book. It inspires people to just go after whatever it is that they want. And obviously with what you do with Super Connector and all of the things in, in your business, so just to kind of catch everybody up, you transition from that personal training space and started something different. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone that's in business can use some maybe some knowledge and expertise on how they can grow their business with some PR. And yeah. I do not want to let this interview end without you at least sharing some of yes. that. So can you talk a little bit about PR as it relates to business and maybe some of the things that you learned in that space? Yeah. 
It's, uh, uh, PR is so different right now in 2023. I think it's a completely different game than it's ever been. And I think previously, maybe years ago, PR was very like traditional PR getting seen in mainstream media, on TV, in publications, in magazines, all of the ways that people would consume media. Now I look at PR as just where is people's attention. That could be social media. It could be podcasts. It could be getting featured on somebody's Instagram live. It could be influencer marketing. I think that PR is about like, where's your ideal customer or client watching, listening, reading? Where are they? Where is their attention? And how can you get their attention? And then at the same time, simultaneously, the importance of credibility, influence, and authority and building credibility for your brand. So anybody right now can get online and say that they are the expert. Anyone, Joe Schmo, someone that's yeah. never built a business. It's a little scary. It's scary. <laughs> can get online and say, I'm an expert. Buy this from me. I'm yeah. the bomb. But the cool thing about humans today is we can sniff that out. Yeah. We can. And people need more than just a pretty social media page yes. in order to say yes, in order to buy, in order to say, um, yeah, let me hire you. They need some credibility. They need some tangible trust. Yeah. And credibility comes from being able to amplify the different places that have had you on that are trustworthy places, whether that is Good Morning America, The Today Show, Forbes, any of the places that are like big mainstream media outlets, or maybe it's just me being featured on your podcast mm -hmm. because the people that listen to you trust you. You're credible to them. So whoever you bring on as a guest on this podcast is automatically going to be somebody that's like, oh, I could trust Jen because Candy trusts Jen. Yeah. Credibility is trust. And you need it when you're building a brand and you're building a business. And if you don't have mainstream media yet and you don't have any podcasts yet, that's okay. You can create credibility in a lot of different ways. You can create credibility by saying your case studies and your testimonials and the people that you've helped. That gives yeah, you credibility. That's a great one. I spoke with the former CMO of Chipotle and I was we were doing just like some Q&As back and forth. And I said to him, I was like, what are some of the ways that people can really stand out in marketing today if they're new and they don't have all of the things that you're talking about. And he said, the only way you can level the playing field is through testimonials, yeah. through having other people, user generated content or other people's testimonials, talk about your product for you. Cause you can go and say how great this is, but if I go and say how great it is, it's a lot different than it's coming from you, right? So I love that you touched on that. What are some of the other things that people can do inside of their business or if they're looking to build a personal brand? I think definitely we have more business owners and investors yeah. on the show. Some of the things that they can do to be seen more in their marketplace. Mm -hmm. Obviously maybe they have some expertise. They just don't know how to package it and leverage it the right way. Yeah. Stages in any way, shape, or form. And I don't necessarily mean only traditional stages where you're standing up in a room full of people. I mean, what kind of stage can you get on, whether that be, can you connect with somebody that has an audience of people that are your target audience? So I call that OPA, leveraging other people's audiences. Mm. It's very hard to build your own audience just by hacking the social media algorithm these days. Yeah. Even if you're doing big things, even if you're a major investor that has had unbelievable amounts of success in business throughout your entire career, if nobody knows who you are, then nobody knows who you are. And, and unfortunately, in this world that we're in today, if they can't see it and they don't know that it happened, it didn't necessarily happen. Mm -hmm. So how can you start to amplify that story and share what you've done with the right people? So how do you build that audience? I would do it by leveraging other people's audiences because they've taken the time to gain that credibility, to gain that trust, to gain that influence over an audience that's excited to follow that person. So can you spend time creating relationships and connections with people with that have an audience that you want and then figure out how to get in front of those people. So whether that is maybe doing a social media live with them, or maybe it's getting on their podcast, or maybe it's uh, having them on your podcast. Maybe it's doing a uh, an article together or a blog together or creating YouTube videos together or speaking on their physical stage. I always tell people, opportunities come from people. Relationships and networking is going to be the number one needle mover in your business for your brand and for when it comes to being seen. That's why the third part of the book is called Be Connected. Mm. And it's all about networking. It's all about relationship building. Look, we've had a, an amazing win-win relationship together. Mm -hmm. You came and spoke yep. in front of my people. They absolutely loved you. They all bought your book. I'm now going to be on your podcast and you're going to share this with your audience. This is how we build each other's audiences. Yeah. This is how we both gain credibility, trust, and influence through audiences that aren't just random people. They're people that are really want to listen to you and listen to me because we know we have a similar audience demographic. Mm -hmm. So think yeah. about who those people are and start to provide value to those people and connect with those people and get introductions to those people 
and and make sure that that person knows that you're you you want to be have a win win relationship with them and kickstart that by really providing value and helping first. Yeah, and I love that anyone listening to if you don't have an online business or stages might not be where your target avatar is living, your target audience is living. You can also do this very old school in the business world. What we would do is collaborations yeah. before that was a thing. We would cross promote. So if I have a roofing company and you have an electrical company, or you know Alex has a plumbing company, we're all going to cross network with each other, refer people each other's way because it's a different area. Like even though we're both maybe helping business owners, we help them in very different ways. Mm -hmm. So I love that even if you're not in the way of stages, you can still amplify with that audience by connecting with other business owners that maybe have the same and similar avatar, but they just do something different for them. I love that. I've seen that happen a lot. Um, and that's a stage because listen, really if they email their audience, like let's mm -hmm. say it's a roofer and they've got a great email list and you are somebody that does something in town, maybe you're a plumber mm -hmm. and they're a roofer and they've got a great email list of people that own homes. Yeah. And their state, your stage now is their email list mm -hmm. and they could promote you on their email list to their hundreds of yeah. thousands of people that they did roofs for it. Look, now you need this plumber. Yeah. That's a stage. It's also trade shows like back again, if you're more brick and mortar or have like a retail or service based trade shows, yes. like you and I, you, you know, I have a spa and you have a jewelry company. We can go to the same and split. There's so many ways to do that. But I also think it makes business more fun. Totally. Right. It's like I can I can sit and do content and do this all day long. And we were shooting stuff before we got here. But it's more fun to be able to connect yes. with someone, to be able to collaborate on ideas. And I think it just makes us all more successful together. A hundred percent. Let's unpack a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. So when you started, take us from some of the first steps, because I know your husband's involved yes. in some way and he you you have some manifestation story, which we can talk about too. Mm -hmm. But what were some of the first things that you started to understand in business when you realized, you know what, I've got proof of concept. I think I've got something here. Yeah. What were some of the first steps that you took? So I'll start with the business that we built, uh, the beginnings of Super Connector Media. Sure. I think that that's um, a really important place to start because that's where I learned <laughs> the greatest lessons uh, from a lot of mess ups and face plants and, and things that were really difficult for me. And you and Chris did that together, right? Yes. Okay. So the business started with, it was Chris's business where he was doing these events. It was all event-based. All events. And they were called- This was prior to 2020? This was prior okay. to 2020. <laughs> yep. We was, know where this is going. <laughs> mm, you absolutely do. <laughs> His events were called Unfair Advantage Live and they were events okay. that connected entrepreneurs to the media and he would it was very simple it was chris and a screen and like 100 people and then he would have a media mixer where he would connect like producers to experts so that they could be on shows or like or, matchmaking exactly PR. cool mm -hmm. okay. it was it was great and i would come to these events and i would see chris on stage and i'm a former actress and i didn't know about this whole like speaking thing i was like i could be really good at this like this seems really fun i think that wait maybe and so i kept coming with him to things and sitting in the audience and supporting him and and i actually started like selling a lot of his stuff at his events and like proving like i could i could really crush it and then we came together and we're like maybe we should take this and make it bigger maybe we should connect like just come together and build a company and so we took what was just an event mm -hmm. and we turned it into a PR agency. We turned it into an educational company where we taught entrepreneurs how to build brands, not just by leveraging the media, but by leveraging everything, social media, connections, relationships. Yeah. And my very first biggest lesson that I learned in, in this um, was <laughs> how to pitch from stage and how to sell. And I think that it doesn't matter what business you are in, sales is unbelievably important. We're oh, yeah. always selling ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're always selling our product. We're always selling our service, whether we're making content or we're having a conversation or we're on a legitimate sales call or we're selling something from a stage. So whatever it is that you do, you need to be amazing at sales. And I was not amazing at sales. I was like, sales feels gross, feels, sales feels yucky. And uh, the very first time that I went to go pitch anything from a stage was at Chris's event, Unfair Advantage Live when we first became partners. This was my first event doing it with him ever. And I was petrified. Oh. I, I was the girlfriend coming in. He was the face. Everyone yeah. knew Chris. Who was I? Now you're going to come sell something. Now I'm going to come sell something. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting like, I remember if you look at the photos from this event, I'm always four feet behind him like this. Like, you know, not feeling good enough. Yeah. Not fe and, and this is all, I'm looking back, I'm like, this was all important. All of these reps, all of this practice, oh, yeah. all of this feeling not good enough, all of this having to build my confidence and being unbelievably uncomfortable on stage is doing exactly what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. proving that 
I can overcome discomfort. I can overcome not feeling good enough and I can overcome it in order to become one of the best speakers. Now I've been named one of the best speakers uh, of 2023 by Real Leaders Magazine. It's like crazy that I look back at how terrible I was. So I was gonna pitch from stage at this event and it was gonna be my job to sell the back end offer at this event. I had never pitched anything from stage. I thought, I'm an actress, I could do this. How hard could it possibly be? I didn't like think that it was a strategy to actually sell things. I'll just read the slides. It'll be great. So here I am with all this fear and imposter syndrome and all this stuff that's happening at this event. It's like my mind, I, it, it was a very, very rough moment in time. And I get on that stage with these slides and I bombed. Oh, I was, I'm like, she either crushed it or it was dead. <laughs> Candy. It bombed. Bombed so bad. Oh my god. Put yourself there for a second. So I'm, I'm doing this. I, I didn't even know what the offer was. I, I tripped on my shoe. Oh, Everybody's silent. It's like when a comedian is bombing and everyone feels oh, really uncomfortable. No. So at the end, there are, there's all these gift bags on the stage. And the, the, the perfect moment would have been if I said, okay, everybody come on up that wants to sign up and grab your gift bag. And that was going to be the big moment where everybody bum rushes the stage and they all buy and it's great. I'm like, okay, everyone, come on up and get your gift bag if you want to buy. <laughs> nobody moved. Oh my gosh. Nobody moved. Oh my goodness. Nobody moved. My heart breaks for old Jen. <laughs> it was terrible. It's I'm, the worst. I, I, I am candy. Like tears. Chris is looking at me like I'm, I'm, I, my boyfriend might break up with me. Like this might be the end. Okay. So I, I go backstage and they all go to lunch. The event goes to lunch and everyone is just, they can't, oh they gosh. don't even talk to me. Like, it's like, I just, this whole event was based on selling stuff. Oh my gosh. That was it. And so I'm like, Jen, you have two options. You can either leave and just like never come back or you can figure out a way to salvage this. Mm. And this is where I, I tell the story in the book because it was when I actually had a moment where I'm like, Jen, who the fuck are you? Yeah. Who are you? And what do you bring to the table that's different from Chris? What do you bring from, to the table that's different from everybody? You got to save this and you got to do it as you. And I had this pep talk with myself and I, I went up to the, the guy that was playing music in the back of the room and I was like, listen, when we come back from lunch, I want you to blast this one song and I want you to play it really, really, really loud for the entire time. And he looked at me after I just like was oh. terrible. Yeah. And he was like, okay. I'm like, please. It's like, okay. At this time, there was no dancing at this event. It was just like a conference. So I'm like, I got nothing to lose. Who are you, Jen? Who are you really? And I'm like, all right, cue the music. And it was the Justin Timberlake song, You Can't Stop the Feeling. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, okay. I'm like, all right, everybody, get on your feet. And I and I just run through the thing, audience, and I'm like, all right, get, stand up. And so everyone starts standing up, and I get everybody in the room dancing, and people are on the tables dancing. They're losing their minds. They're on the chairs. People bum rush the stage. Everybody's dancing. The energy in the room completely shifts mm -hmm. because I was able to just, like, take down all my nerves and my imposter syndrome and, like, yeah. oh, my God, I just was terrible and just be me. Be you. Be me and show at. people who I was yeah. and show people what my superpower was. Shifted the energy of the room. We made seven figures that event, completely like regained the confidence of in us that the people in that room had. Yeah. And the most important part was I needed to fail at that in order to go back and learn everything that there is to know about selling and learn that I needed to learn how to sell. Yeah. And, and so, in your own way, right? right? Like you could have done a play by play. I always say like Pete has such a great model for selling from stage. You could have done all of that and you would have been right back to where you were before where it wasn't authentic to you. So the moment, and in my life, this is when I've been the most successful, when I'm able to drop all the expectations of who somebody thinks I am or who I'm not and just be more of me. It's like, it's like the chains come off and then you can really soar. And that's what you did. And you, it thought, it made me think of, uh, I think it might be Tony's quote that says, motion creates emotion. Yes. So getting people up and getting them juiced and like getting them out of their bodies and, and not just in this like analytical headspace, it shifted everything for you. So everything. I love that. And it regained my confidence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it, and then it birthed the dance parties, which our company is known for. Oh, that's great. And now great. every event, whether it's on Zoom, you were on Zoom with yes, us. Everyone's yes, probably yes, dancing yes. when they came on Zoom, on Zoom and in person. Now we always do that. And it, yeah. it became an amazing piece that makes us special. But then I was like, listen, and this is for everyone that's listening. Like sometimes you have to fail in order to learn the oh, lesson. Yeah. I had to fail in order to be like, all right, I'm going to become amazing at this now. I understand that this is something that I, and, and 
and I now bring Jen to the table when mm -hmm. I sell. And but I do know strategy and I do know how to do it and I do ha I know how to make a pitch and it's mm -hmm. been unbelievably powerful and valuable for me in business and it's gotten me to where I am today and it's helped a lot of people because I believe that sales is service. Yeah. And when you believe in your offer and you can present it in a way that's really special and unique and and to you and you can put your soul out on the stage like that and I needed to learn that from that experience then people want in because they 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 feel like they're just getting into an opportunity that's going to change their life instead of being sold something and they're going to get it from someone else that's so right. if you don't sell them it is a little bit of a, the responsibility of the business owner the entrepreneur that if you don't sell them they're going to they want something there was a reason all those people were there so i think what you taught was so beautifully because you either learn from mentors or your mistakes. Mm -hmm. The latter is far more painful and expensive, but you typically learn faster from your mistakes than a mentor. So everybody listening, you can take a piece of that, but I promise you when you go and make a mistake on your own, you're going to remember this conversation. It's going to hit harder and you're going to learn more quickly. That's yes. what I found in my life. Now you've worked with so many different brands, a lot of people that want to build personal brands. Mm -hmm. And I always like to do a little bit of a controversial question. Let's do it. So what are some of the dark sides of personal brands that you've seen? The dark side, the controversial side, the maybe like the not so thing, the not so great things that you see people, maybe the wrong people, wanting to build a personal brand for the wrong reasons. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a whole lot of that out there right now. Yeah, that's why I thought it'd be great to talk about it. Yeah, and I mean, what I think a big thing that I see is that people are what I really. I, I don't love this and and people are gonna you know think what they want to think about this opinion but I think that there is a lot of a lot a lot a lot of like real fake highlight real stuff going on out mm -hmm. there that it's building a life and a presence and a and this vision of like who somebody wants everybody else to see them as that isn't true to who they really are mm -hmm. maybe it's like I just got an email from a private jet company that was like here, we'll rent out your jet so you can do a photo shoot on the private jet and pretend that you are on the yeah, private jet. They call it the influencer shoot. I'm like, why would I do this? Yeah. Why would I do this if I, like, this doesn't make any sense because what's happening uh, behind the scenes with the other people is now people are scrolling social mm -hmm. and they're comparing their real life That's right. to these highlight reels of influencers or other people that look like they've got this, like, spectacular situation going on when, number one, it's very, very far from the truth. And, and sometimes it is true, right? Sometimes that is somebody's, that somebody's life and that's sure. great. Yeah. But the person that's scrolling isn't necessarily aware of what's really going on behind the scenes, even if they are on a private jet. Maybe they're having a hard time with their spouse. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're having a family situation. And the person that's scrolling is like, why does my life not look perfect right. like this? Yeah. Why am I going through this? And it can cause like a, a lot of crap to go on in people's lives. Absolutely. And I, I'm seeing that there's, there's more suicides than ever before. There's more depression mm -hmm. than ever before. And I'm not an expert in this, so I'm not saying that that's the whole reason why, but I've been seeing it firsthand, even with myself scrolling yeah. and then for some reason feeling like, oh, my business isn't as good as this person's mm -hmm. or why am I not traveling to Italy this summer or like, you know, getting yeah. in your own head. So I think that it's, it's twofold. It's the influencer or the person that's presenting this, this mm -hmm. highlight reel or this, this life that they want people to see. I understand and I know that Instagram is definitely like your online magazine. Mm -hmm. And like when you go to mine, you'll see me on stage, you'll see me speaking and the outfits and everything like that. But I also find that it is our responsibility if we're out there building a brand in the public eye, and it, it's going to help you in your business too, believe me, to take down the mask a little bit and show up as who you really are and tell the truth of what's going on. Yeah. So an example of that is my, my husband and I were on a date the other day, and we got in a huge fight on the date. Huge fight. Like massive. Like it was not fun. And we took a photo before we went into the restaurant to have mm -hmm. the date. And after we got over the fight, Chris texted me. He's like, will you send me the photo so I can post it? I said, I will only send you this photo if you tell the real story of what happened on the date. And he's like, did he? Yes. Wow. And that post got unbelievable amounts of engagement and people connecting and people yeah. reaching out to us because they're like, thank you for sharing the real story. Yeah. And I go live on Instagram every morning and I put my makeup on live mm -hmm. every day. I have no makeup on and I do my contour and I put my lashes on and I answer questions and I talk to people because I feel, I feel that two reasons. Number one, it's my responsibility to let everybody know that I'm a human too. And like, this is the realness. And we talk about all of everything that's really going on in life here. So yeah. if you are looking at the highlight reel, you know, what really goes on behind the scenes, you know, how much cake it takes to put yeah. this face on, <laughs> like, you know, the process, I think that's important. And then number two, it's my way to truly connect with my audience because people don't like looking at perfect people. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, aspirational content is great, but if yeah. you have a service, a story, or a product, and you want to genuinely connect with other humans, and you want those people to listen to you or buy from you or be part of your community and part of your world, you need to show them who you are so that they feel like they can relate to you. Yeah. I like following your content because I feel like you're real and I can relate to you and I know yeah. who you are and I know your heart and I see your animals and your farm and all the things that you do. When you're building your brand, please keep in mind that I know you might think that you need to showcase all of your Louis Vuitton and all of your airplanes that you don't necessarily really have and all right. of that stuff because it's easy to look at that and get wrapped up with that and think that you need to showcase that in order for people to think you're credible. You don't need that. Often, yeah. less is more. The more real you can be, the more you're going to connect. And I think it's just sharing the story behind the scene. Yes. Right? Like I have been on amazing vacations that I'm so grateful for and houses and all the things, but I always try to remind people, don't compare the first couple years of your business with where I'm 25 years in. And for 15 years, I didn't take one week's vacation. 15 years, never took a week's vacation. My staff took vacation. My employees were always out for 10, 14 days at a time, but I never did because I was doing the work first. Now that's not what somebody wants to do all the time, but I think it's important to share that journey. It was so important for you guys to share what happened at that beautiful restaurant because everyone's probably thinking, oh, she has that book and they have this company and everything's great and they're going to this beautiful place as opposed to realizing that like real shit happens every day, no yes. matter where you are, what level of success, it doesn't discriminate. Yeah. Tell us who this book's for. Mm. Well, Kayla. Kayla. <laughs> everyone that's named Kayla. A is everyone is named Kayla. It's not just for women. It's for everybody out there. And this book is also not just for entrepreneurs. It's not just for somebody that wants to build a brand. This book is for anybody who wants to be seen in their life, whether that is being seen by their family and their friends and their relationships and their community. And they want to be seen as who they really are and appreciated for who they really are and able to live their most fulfilled life and their journey of what they want, not what anybody else wanted for them. And to be able to just feel free like that little kid that they were when they were eight or six or five before the conditioning happened. And they were able to say, I want this. This is what I want to be. This is who I want to be seen as. This is who I am. I want everybody that reads this book to feel courageous enough to be able to do that. And the person that does want to build a brand, the person that does want to have an audience and be seen and sell their products and, and be out there and create content that helps people, I want that person to really be able to read the strategy that I used in order to do that. And I did it through pivoting through a lot of different iterations of myself and a lot of different businesses. And I want my reader to understand and know that it doesn't have to be perfect, that the mess is often the message. Clarity comes in motion. And exactly. your life and your journey has been a testament to that. Is you had to take all of those missteps and have all of those other issues in order to get where you are now. And so I'm so glad that you put this out in the world and shared it. Let everyone know where can they find you? Where can they find the book? Anything you want to share? I'm on Instagram. That's the easiest place to be, at Jen underscore Gottlieb, and then bseenbook.com. You can get the book anywhere, but if you go to bseenbook.com, all the stores are there for you to choose from. You put your little number in the confirmation box, and you'll get gifts from me, so go to bseenbook.com. All right, guys, you heard it, bseenbook.com. Grab it. Thanks so much for spending this time with us and just pouring into our audience. I think more people need to find their voice and really know who they are, and I think you're such a testament to that and just all of the messy stuff that comes along. it. So thank you for being you and being so authentic. Appreciate you having here. Thank you so much, Candy. This thank was you. so fun. Yes.